So as an engineer, I can't help but look up and be impressed by the largest rotating machines in the world. They are truly feats of engineering that are, to an engineer, quite spectacular. Think about a turbine that's a football in a field half high in the air with blades that are over a football field long. That's where we're headed. Today, wind is being developed rapidly because of its low cost. In the past, you basically had a, a demand. People turned on their lights, industry demanded electricity, and a power plant would ramp up and down to meet those needs. Today, it's gonna to be different when we have renewable resources because the renewable resource is gonna vary, and therefore, we have to make sure that demand doesn't exceed what we can produce. With electricity produced by wind accounting for about 7% of our power in the United States, we can handle that. But as the electricity grows to be a larger component, the electricity from wind, we will have to start addressing some of these issues. So we have economists working alongside with statisticians and engineers to really take a look at these problems. Improving wind plants, improving transmission, and understanding the economic interactions of those things can help remove barriers to the penetration of wind deeper into the electrical market. One of the things right now we want to do is be able to design wind plants better than we have in the past. We lose about anywhere from 10 to 30 percent of the energy in a wind plant due to the fact that the wakes of the upstream turbines interact with the downstream turbines. If we can understand better and model better what those wakes look like and how they interact with the downstream turbines, then we can perhaps build wind turbines better to withstand those types of loads and lay out the wind plants better. So I'm definitely an enthusiast of the technology itself and what engineering and science has been able to do. Um, but I guess I also am kind of excited about where we can go in the next 20 years.